Using water pushed by gravity is rapidly becoming one of the most popular ways to water a garden. Gravity systems do take the most adjustment and tweaking to get just right, but when they do, they're one of the most rewarding ways to water. To plan a gravity irrigation system, it's important to know how gravity affects water pressure. Water pressure is generated and lost at a rate of 0.433 PSI for every one foot of elevation change. This means that a three foot high water barrel would generate about 1.3 pounds of pressure. However, that water barrel is not always gonna be full, so you can't really count on it always having that much pressure when you plan the system. Therefore, we're gonna use emitters that require very low pressure. What we're using might even work at zero PSI so long as there is flow available. The easiest way to achieve height is to use the natural elevation changes in the surrounding landscapes. Unfortunately, this is not always possible. But in those cases, a barrel stand or a fabricated structure can often do the trick. And while it's not ideal, the height of the barrel itself can support a small system. Now let's go check out the parts we have so we can see all the components of a gravity irrigation system. Come on. Let's take a look at our rain barrel here. This is an Eco Rain rain barrel that can hold up to 50 gallons of water. The spigot is attached here at the bottom. The spigot is where we're gonna place our head assembly, which includes things like a timer, a filter, and then finally the adapter to get your mainline tubing connected to the rest. First up in our head assembly is this Aerotech Zero Pressure Timer. What makes it a good fit in a gravity system is it doesn't require water pressure in order to open and operate the valve inside. Most irrigation valves require the aid of water pressure, and this is a unique exception. It also has a flexible programming schedule that makes it a great fit for almost any garden. Next up is our filter. This fine mesh filter can protect the components of the irrigation system. Drip emitters have narrow orifices, and you'll want a fine mesh filter in order to keep them from becoming clogged. And last is our permalock hose by tubing adapter. This is the part we'll use to connect our mainline tubing to the head assembly that's connected to the rain barrel. Here's our one inch poly pipe cutter. This can cut up to one inch of poly tubing. It's not strictly necessary. Works pretty good with scissors as well, but we're gonna use our tools to make the job a little bit easier. Next up is our bag of various assorted fittings and parts. We'll go over these in more detail while we're setting up the system. And finally, here's our half inch main line tubing. This is gonna be the main line that feeds the emitters on the system. We've got our quarter inch micro tubing and our 5 8 roll of drip tape. All right, let's go put this together. So here's our plan for this system. We'll be placing our water barrel at the top of a retaining wall near the garden. Then run our main line to two separate beds where we'll install drip tape in one and button drippers in the other. It really helps to plan the system out first to get a good idea of the parts you'll need. If you'd like to learn more about using a diagram to plan a drip system and determine the parts you'll need to order for your garden, check out our planning a drip irrigation system video in the top right or the description below. Okay, let's organize our parts and start the install. Right here, I'm just opening up all my fittings so I can get organized into piles. I like to put the same parts in the same parts. So I'll put all my couplings in one spot, all my tees in one spot, all my elbows in one spot. That way, during the install, I have it in a nice little neat organized pile here. I got the drip tape takeoff adapter valves so that we can turn off individual rows of drip tape in our bed. Like, what if I harvest one row of vegetables before the other? You can use this here to turn off that line of drip tape. This time I brought the slightly larger green punch. It's a little bit bigger than a quarter inch punch. It just makes it easier to push this into the mainline tubing. Got our end caps here for our half inch mainline tubing. And here we have our 90 degree elbow so we can turn our mainline 90 degrees anywhere we need to. We'll be using a couple of these, for example, to get our tubing to travel up the bed and then over the top of the raised bed. Got some stakes of various sizes so we can hold things in the ground. Trust me, you'll want to be able to pin things to the ground or it'll move all over or the raccoons will move it all over for you. Hose thread by tubing adapter we mentioned earlier. It goes under your head assembly and it's the part that connects your main line to the head assembly. I brought one that's an elbow shape too because the spigot on a rain barrel is really low to the ground. So I thought this might be handy just in case. It's looking like we won't need it, but it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Here I've got our one half inch tubing tee that we're going to use to split our main line into two different directions. Couplings, just in case I make some bad cuts. I brought three, that's how much I trust my cutting ability. Drip tape end caps, so we can close off the runs of drip tape. One thing I like about these, like you can just crimp your drip tape and a lot of people do. I like these though, cause you can just unthread the end here to flush out your drip tape lines anytime you want. It's a lot easier than crimping, uncrimping. To punch our holes in the main line, for our button drippers, we're gonna use this one quarter inch pro punch. It makes a slightly smaller hole than the other punch does. As you can see, it has a lever action, which makes it a great punch for diminished hand strength, or if you just wanna make the job easy and you have a lot of holes to punch. Now this here is an interesting little piece. This is what we use in our dirty water irrigation kits. It's a one quarter inch coupling valve. Now we use it in our dirty water kits as an emitter, even though it's not actually an emitter. What makes it handy is you can open it or close it to get more or less water flow coming out of it. 
Uh, and because it has a wide channel, it's a lot less likely to get clogged. So it makes it a good fit for the, a dirty water irrigation system. The dripper we're gonna use today is Toro's Cleanable Dripper. These work great in gravity systems because they require almost no pressure in order to operate. What's nice about these drippers, in the event of a clog, they can be opened and cleaned. You simply unthread the cap from the housing and rinse any debris out of the inside. When you're cleaning this dripper, be sure not to lose the white diaphragm that's inside. The diaphragm is very important to its operation and can be lost pretty easily if you're not careful. Next up, we have our stabilizer stakes. We use these stabilizer stakes to keep our button drippers near the plant where we want it to drip directly on the roots. All you do is you place your one quarter inch tubing down in these slots, then push it into the soil and you'll have your button dripper held in place. These here are called goof plugs. These goof plugs, as the name implies, can patch up any mistakes you make with the one quarter inch punch. For example, if you make a hole in your half inch main line that you no longer need, patch it up with one of these. Here I've got some one quarter inch tees. Since we're gonna be using some button drippers fed by microtubing in a couple spots, just in case we wanna branch out and have a couple different drippers for one run of tubing, we can use these to split it in two. And this here is just a little one quarter inch barb tubing coupling. You punch a hole in your half inch or larger main line, put this in on one side, connect your quarter inch micro tubing to the other, and then you can run over to plants to have them fed by button drippers. And here I've got a tubing clamp with a nail. We're gonna use these to secure our half inch main line to the wall of the bed. I also brought some in a quarter inch size, I don't know that we'll need them, but just in case. I also went ahead and put our mainline tubing out in the sun. This softens it up a little bit, which makes it a lot easier to work with, like pushing it on over fittings. And it also starts making it straighten itself out. You can see it was a pretty tight coil at first, but now it's getting pretty straight all by itself just from being set in the sun. All right, now let's elevate our rain barrel. Gonna choose a good spot for it. So we have about five feet of elevation. This means we should be able to operate both beds at the same time, the button drippers and the drip tape both. Got the water screen here so that when you capture rainwater, it gets filtered a little bit. Rain can bring with it quite a bit of debris. Well, let's set up our head assembly. If we remember, that's our timer, our filter, and our hose by tubing adapter. I'm just threading this onto the spigot here. The timer should go first. You don't want parts like your filter under constant pressure. Really, it's the constant pressure, the static pressure wouldn't be high in a rain barrel, but still, better to protect your components as much as you can. All right, and now our filter. Be careful the screen doesn't come out while you're doing this part. It just threads right on. There's the screen, interestingly enough. So remember when I said I want to get the elbow one of these just in case? I think we're having a just in case moment. I could do this and have the mainline tubing come like out like that. I think I'll use the elbow to give it a much better and more convenient shape. Let's try our elbow shaped hose by tubing adapter here. Swivel on it is pretty nice. I mean, you can thread the fitting on without having to turn the whole elbow like that. Remember, you just wanna finger tighten, maybe hand tighten depending on your hand strength, but finger tighten and maybe another quarter turn is the safest with hose threaded components. And don't use thread sealant or silicone tape. With hose threaded components, you shouldn't need that. Just the gasket and the female fitting is what makes a watertight seal. And now we're done with our head assembly. Our head assembly is our timer to automate the irrigation system, our filter to protect the components from clogging, and our hose by tubing adapter so we can get our mainline tubing connected. Now we're gonna set up our mainline tubing. We're gonna connect our tubing to the barb on our takeoff adapter here. If you have any problems with this part, you can use a cup of very hot water. Dip the end of the tubing in that water and it'll make it pretty easy to slide on over that barb. Wasn't too bad there because we've left it in the sun. And now I'm gonna screw the locking nut down on over the tubing. This kind of like works like a clamp and it secures the tubing to the fitting. Now I'm gonna get a T and a few elbows. I'm gonna cut the main line down here at the bottom so I can split our main line into two. One to go to the drip tape bed, and one to go to the button dripper bed. Just gonna put on this permalock T here and secure the locking nut in place. Then I'm gonna add the main line to the T so we can run it over to our first bed where we'll install our drip tape. And over here, it's time to take an elbow to bring it over. Elbow fittings make it much easier to turn 90 degrees. Now I'll connect another piece of tubing here and take our main line over to the bed. And then we'll use an elbow to go up the bed. With a short piece of tubing connected to that, I'll put another elbow at the top so we can turn our header row to go across the top of it. With the elbow at the top, next I'm gonna connect my header row. The header row is basically just like a main line, but it's at the head of the bed, and it's where I'm gonna connect our drip tape. I'm just gonna feed the plants in the bed. Next, I'm gonna cap off my header row with a permalock end cap. It's threadable, which makes it handy for flushing. You just remove the cap, and you can flush your lines of any debris that got in during installation, and some will. 
Now I'm gonna hammer a clamp in place to hold our header row, and then we can punch in some holes and connect our drip tape. Because this bed is three feet across, and the drip tape will cover about a diameter of 12 inches, I'll be using two runs of tape. To install it, I'll first punch two holes in the header row. Then I'm gonna push the barbed end of our barbed takeoff adapter into the holes. After the adapters are secured, it's time to run the drip tape. All you have to do is run it down the bed, cut it to length where you want it, and cap off the end. When you're cutting it, be careful not to cut into the emitter there. You don't want to actually cut in one of the emitters, and make sure to leave a little bit of space after the emitter, because when you put on your end cap, you want it to have enough room to get on there to make a good, nice seal. Sometimes it takes a little fiddling with to get the tape on over the barb. You want to turn the locking nut so it retracts all the way back before you push your tape on over the barb and lock it in place, just like how you do with the mainline fittings. Then I'm going to repeat and run my lines. Now we can cap both lines with the permalock end cap, just like other permalock fittings. Slide the tape on over the barb, turn the locking nut in place, and it's capped. It's a threadable end cap, so you can unthread the cap to flush the lines anytime you need, particularly after installation. Here's a quick recap of how we installed our drip tape bed. We brought the main line down from the barrel, installed a T so we could split it. With the T in place to split the main line, I ran it over here to this elbow so I could turn our main line 90 degrees to get over to our drip tape bed. Used a couple elbows, one elbow to get up the bed, another elbow to get over so we could build our header row. Once that was done, we capped it off and used a clamp to hold it into place. Then using our punch, we created two holes, one for each run of drip tape that we wanted to use. I went with two because of the size of our bed. We should only need two runs of this drip tape to cover all the plants in the bed. Then you connect your drip tape to the barb takeoff adapter valve, just like you have with the other fittings. Next, I ran our drip tape down to the end and cut it to length, being careful not to cut into the emitter and making sure I have enough room after the emitter to install the end cap. Then we installed our end caps and we're ready to go do our button dripper bed. We're gonna run the main line the exact same way we did on the first bed. The tubing being so warm from being in the sun is incredibly easy to work with right now. It's pretty much straightened itself out. In this bed, instead of drip tape as an emitter, we're gonna use button drippers and a coupling valve. Now we're gonna run our header row just like we did on the other bed. One elbow to travel up the bed. And another elbow to travel across where we can cap it off with an end cap. A quick tip if you're struggling to get the tubing on over the barb of the fittings is to dip the end in very hot water. This softens up the tubing enough to make it flexible and much easier to slide over the barb. All right, now let's get our button drippers connected to the header row. We're gonna start by punching a hole in our half inch main line using the one quarter inch pro punch. Then we're gonna use this one quarter inch coupling, push it into that hole, and the other side will connect some one quarter inch poly tubing. Okay, now let's install our dripper into the end of this tubing run. This here is the Toro cleanable dripper, and it's one that can work at near zero pressure. After I've connected the dripper to the tubing, all I have to do is put it in the stake and push it in the ground next to our plant. All right, now we're gonna repeat that process of connecting our micro tubing to the main line, running it over to the plant with the dripper and a stabilizer stake. So now we're gonna use our one quarter inch coupling valve. We're gonna use this one here as a dripper. You know, it's not technically a dripper. Normally you'd use the valve to have on off. Say you wanted to turn off a row of drip line or one quarter inch tubing. But we're gonna use this as an emitter like you would in a dirty water system. All right, now let's tee off some of these lines. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna cut into the line about here because we're gonna put another plant over here and we're gonna want a dripper to be able to get over to it. So first I'm gonna take this piece of quarter inch tubing and I'm gonna have it set in the hot water for a minute. I'm gonna put it on over the bottom of the T. Now we'll cut into our line here. There we go. That's how to use a T to turn one quarter inch tubing run 
into two quarter inch tubing runs so that we can support two button trippers from just one length of tubing. Now we're going to repeat that process of connecting our micro tubing to the main line, running it over to the plant with a dripper and a stabilizer stake, and using a quarter inch T to branch off of that same one quarter inch line. A quick recap of the second bed. We connected our main line tubing to the other side of the T and ran it over to the bed the same way we did our first bed. We used a couple elbows to get up the bed and over the bed to establish our header row. Using a quarter inch punch, we punched holes in our header row so we could connect our one quarter inch fittings. We ran our quarter inch tubing runs over to the plants where we installed button drippers at the end of our quarter inch tubing. We staked them in place with a stabilizer stake to keep them from moving around too much during pressurization or operation. Then we decided to use a coupling valve as an emitter on one of our plants. You'll recall a coupling valve makes a great emitter for dirty water irrigation systems. This is because they have larger orifices that make it easier to pass debris. And they're adjustable as you can open or close the valve to get greater or less flow. And finally, in a couple of locations, we took one of our quarter inch tubing runs and split it into two with the T. And in that way, one single quarter inch tubing run can serve multiple plants. Now that we've completed installing the irrigation in both beds, it's time to flush the system. Flushing will clean the inside of your system of any debris that might have got in during installation. All you have to do is unthread the end caps and turn on the water source. Now that we've finished flushing the system, we're going to put our end caps back on and run it for the first time. See if the system fires right up. I'm going to run a manual cycle on my timer here just by turning this knob to on. Should make a noise followed by the valve opening. When we run our system for the first time, we're going to do a walkthrough while it operates to make sure there's no leaks or no problems and to make sure our emitters are working as they should. When you walk the system for the first time, what you want to pay attention to is connections, joints, your emitters, where your emitters connect your tubing to make sure there's no leaks, make sure your end caps are on securely so no water is coming out the end. And you'll want to check your emitters to make sure each one's dripping at the rate it's supposed to, not too fast, not too little. So next, we're going to see our coupling valve. Let's see what happens. See, that's why this is handy as it works in emitter. You can open it if you need quite a bit more water. Or, look at that. All from just a little bit of pressure. Or you can even turn it all the way down to a drip. We use these as emitters in dirty water irrigation systems. The wide channel allows debris to pass without getting clogged. And just like that, we now have a gravity drip irrigation system. Let's recap what we did. Got our water source about five feet off the ground. We got our head assembly here, our timer, our hose filter, and our threads by tubing adapter to get our mainline tubing come down where we split it off into a T. We went over here to our button dripper bed using an elbow, and then a couple more elbows to get up the bed and over the bed where we cap our main line at the end so it can be pressurized. We installed our button drippers and our coupling valve that we're using as a dripper at various locations in the bed where we're gonna be putting our plants. Over here, very similar thing. We took this side of the main line, and just like on the other bed, we used a couple elbows to get up to the end of the bed and cap the end of our lines. Here we put our drip tape takeoff adapters, and these are adapter valves for the nice on-off. If you want to be able to turn off a line and leave the other one on, you can do it with these. Ran our drip tape down our row of plants and capped them off at the end with our threaded caps. Thank you for joining us today while we built this system. What we did here helped out or sparked your curiosity? Give us a like. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment. We do watch our comment section and we'll be happy to help. If you want more personalized help, go to dripdepot.com and contact us there. We'll be more than happy to assist.